In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create sequential serial numbers in Lightburn. Hi, my name is Gil, and today I'm going to explore the variable text tools in Lightburn. Using the tools, we're going to create a project that will add sequential serial numbers into your project allowing you to run multiple jobs and get each part marked with a unique number. If you are creating objects that need a serial number, this is the fastest way you can get results in Lightburn. Now before we jump into Lightburn, let me invite you to hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming projects and tutorials based around the software. And I'd love it if you join us for the laser live streams we host on this channel, where you can show off successful projects and meet other laserologists who are exploring what they can make with lasers. The link to the group is in the description below, and I look forward to seeing what you create with your laser. Okay, let's jump into Lightburn so I can show you this new and powerful tool. All right, we're back in Lightburn, and today we're going to level up the skills that you're gonna have with using variable text. I love this feature in Lightburn. It's become one of my favorite as I've dived deeper into how to use it. I really like how it's laid out, how it functions, as well as the fact that you're able to create things really, really quickly. A lot of people will use it for trophies, for badges, for ID plaques. You can actually get a little creative with it too. But before we get into the creativity, let me go through the groundwork on how to use a spreadsheet file and incorporate that information into Lightburn to make sure that you are creating your jobs quicker and faster. Now, if you haven't dealt with variable text before, check out this tutorial right here. The link is in the description. We're gonna build upon that original class where we used variable text, where we created a whole bunch of serial numbers that you could use in a number of different projects. So if you haven't seen that video, I strongly suggest going and seeing that now and then coming back here because we're gonna build on what we learned in the last tutorial. We're gonna use text markers to introduce information from a spreadsheet. So let me show you what I'm gonna to use to create and import that information. So I'm using Google Sheets, which works very similar to Excel or any other type of spreadsheet software that's out there. And let me go and quickly jump into that. So here we are in Google Sheets. This is some Lightburn test data that I put in. And you can see here, it's all laid out in a very journalistic form. Uh, the first column I have here is a whole bunch of names. On the second column, I have their position. The third column is their affiliation, a whole bunch of emails in the fifth column. And the sixth column, we have where they're assigned. So we've got a whole bunch of information. I wanna take this information and make uh, badges. I think it'd be really cool to make some badges for a reunion that is planned. Someone's come to me, they've said, Gil, can you go and make some badges? I've gone, yep, I'm gonna use my laser for it. At this point, the only thing I wanna point out is you have columns A, B, C, D, and E. If you think of column A as being the, all the names and column B being the positions moving left to right, all the different information, within Lightburn, the variable text marker that we're gonna use is actually the percentage sign and a number. So that will relate back to these different columns. Column A is actually percentage zero. Column B is actually percentage one. Column C is percentage two. Column D is percentage three. Column four is percentage five. And depending on how much information, if I was, if I had information in column F, G, H, a number would actually assign to that bunch of information in the same way. That's a little tricky because when we think about information and the way humans process, zero is not a number, zero is nothing, right? So naturally people will think, well, column A will be percentage one. In this case, it's actually percentage zero. And that happens to be because of the format we're going to export this data out. So let's go to file download. And we're actually going to make a comma separated values file, which is called a CSV. So we're gonna download that right now. And in this case, the all the information in column one A, see I, see I just said column one, right? My brain, I'm a human being. 
Column A is actually the first bunch of information within that file. So let's jump into Lightburn and I'm gonna show you exactly how to incorporate that CSV file into your projects. Okay, we're back into Lightburn here. And the very first thing that I wanna do is I wanna bring in that CSV file. So I'm gonna to go to variable text window, one of my favorite windows right now. And you can see all the information's there. We haven't actually told it put any information anywhere at this point, so it's all brand new. And you can see here there's a CSV file and it says browse. So I'm gonna browse onto my desktop. In fact, I'll go straight to my desktop here and you'll see here spreadsheet for Lightburn and I have Lightburn text data sheet one CSV. So I'm gonna select that, hit open and we have now assigned Lightburn to understand that if we are taking data from a CSV file from a spreadsheet, that's where I want you to look for it. Now, we're gonna do a quick test here. So I'm gonna grab my text. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna say percentage zero, which if I have set this up correctly, will be the name. Let's go percentage one, percentage two, percentage three, percentage four, oh, I made a mistake, and percentage five. I'm now gonna move that into the middle of our work area. And in fact, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger just so that you guys can see it. All right. At this point, we need to do a little bit more work and we need to tell Lightburn that these percentages are not just text because if we go to the preview, that's all that comes up. It's not what we wanted to do. So in this case, we're gonna select it, come over to this drop down menu and we're going to move it to merge CSV. And at this point, if we go back to our variable text and hit test, you can see all the information that was in that database along that very first row comes up. So we've got the name, position, affiliation, email address, and where they've been assigned. Perfect. Now, I'm gonna make this a little smaller because I wanna test out how this is gonna look, Let's see how many badges that I can actually get across. And one of the things that's really interesting is you may wanna just test it by selecting it and maybe copying and pasting. And then if we move this along this way and hit the test, you'll notice that the information is exactly the same. It hasn't moved to the next generation of information. Wow, there's a pun there. Did you get that? Wow. Um, <laughs> Paramount's gonna sue me for saying next generation on this tutorial. You can see here that's the same information. That's That'll happen as well if I duplicate it. So I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna hit Command D. Do the same thing here. Hit the test. It's not gonna work. So the way to make sure you don't get caught with that is to actually select that information and hit the array tool. And in this case, I've actually set this up already. So we're gonna, it's got a little bit of distance, but we may have to play around with it. I think that's not gonna be big enough. So let's move that across. I'm gonna give that a value of 80. Actually, we'll do it 100. And then we'll give it another row. And we'll row, we'll do that. And that's good, that's good enough for our test, right? Let's just center it. Actually, we don't even need to do that. You can see here, all right, we've got some problems with the email addresses. We need a little bit more information out there. So let's, uh, let's get rid of these two. She's gonna screw up our array, so we'll just get, we'll go back to that first one. Any modification of this sort of stuff that you wanna do, you always wanna go and select it and come back to that. So if you don't use the create grid array tool in this case, and you just delete some of the information or the markers in the workspace, you'll actually skip over the data when you actually run the job. You don't wanna do that. I learned that the hard way. Trust me, you don't wanna do that. All right, let's see, let's try it now. Much better, great. So you can see here, I'm just gonna click off so you guys can see. When I hit test, you've got Jean-Luc Picard as the captain, we've got Will Riker as the first officer, we've got Geordie LaForge as the engineer, Tasha Yar security, Wharf security, Beverly Crusher, and we can keep going on. We can also scale it down when we get our final design. So we've done all of that successfully. That's a great test. I'm just gonna delete these two or three, or oh gosh, there were like six. And I'm gonna scale this up and I wanna show you something that got me into a little bit of trouble. We have all of these set up, but they're all in the same selection. I wanna set up 
an artistic badge, something with a little bit of flair. All I can do is make this list go bigger or smaller. That's all I can do. So before I actually get to designing the badge, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this apart. Let's do the first one first. It's the first one. Individual text markers is what I'm doing right now. And I'm separating them before doing the next one. Three, we'll do one, four. Not, I'm not hitting return. I'm using my mouse, in this case, the trackpad to click somewhere in the work area. I'm exaggerating at this point. I'm gonna select all of them. He said, oh, I'm still on the text. Let's get out of that. Let's select all of them. And then I'm coming back here and I'm going to, again, select them as a merge CSV file. So if I hit this test, great. I now have all that information still displaying when I run the job, but now I can actually move it around and resize it. I can rescale it. I can do anything that I want from a creative point of view. So let me just move those all around here. I'm gonna start playing with it. Oh, there you go. See the fifth one, we don't need it. I know I had five layers of information, but zero is a number as far as Lightburn is concerned with this data. So there we go, we've got some information here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the font style. Works out that, oh, that they have a Star Trek type font. Did I say Star Trek? No, a space font, shouldn't say that. It happens to be named after an old friend of mine. So let's go take a look. There you go. We're looking a little bit more Starfleet-y now, which is great. We've got that. Uh, I'm gonna start grabbing tools and let's start working out what we can actually create here as a futuristic badge to identify everyone for a reunion. Maybe all these people are old people now. Would be a great idea for a TV show, right? Oh, don't say that, Gil. I'm actually going to also go into the tools area. Sorry, the window, the art library. I've got a little bit of a logo here, which I'm gonna bring in. Fantastic. Let's close off the art library. Select it. I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna hit that test button. We've got their affiliation here. So I wanna put that underneath. Let's see. Yep, that's looking good. Let's get these two over here. And I can't remember. Oh, so I'm going to put their where they they did their commission underneath here, and their email address. I'm going to bring it over here and probably just scale it down a little bit. So even though it's at 13, let's make it eight. And let's go. All right. Something's happening. Something's happening here. Got a little bit of space. Just trying to work this out on the fly. So let's bring this badge in here. Let's make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to grab this guy and move it under here. And in fact, we're going to make that 10. So first of all, I'm going to line these properly so they're all on top of each other. Whoa. Let's undo that. Let's select those. Let's grab it. I'm going to say I've got a little bit more room to, to work with here. I'm also gonna select this guy and bring it up a little bit. I'm gonna bring him in a little bit. Now I'm keeping an eye on the information. You see, information pops out, need a little bit more space there. So let's go, let's go make it a little bit further along. That's looking good. I think that's a little bit further down. So let's uh, put that in the middle there. Let's see how we're going. Actually, that probably would align closer. Should be kind of cool. Ooh, here we go. That should be in line with everything else. So let's do that the fast way. Select all of these. Beautiful. Let's hit the test again. All right, we're looking good. I'm gonna grab that bottom, just bring it up a little bit. Bring that down a little bit too. Got a little bit of space here. I'm gonna, I like to kind of have different layers to things like this. All right, that's looking good. I'm now gonna grab and do an offset. And we're gonna do a double line here for the offset. And I think that's good enough for my design when it comes to these badges. I've got the email address right down below. Oh, you know what? I'm going to just change that just slightly. I'm gonna make that 11. It's a little bit like designing anything else. We're good. And I might just move this up just a little bit 
just a little bit. Yep, that's great. We'll do that as well with this one. Just trying to save as much real estate as possible. Because, you know, when you've got to go and print out lots and lots of jobs, you want to make sure that it works for, for, for everyone involved. Keep your... Ooh, okay. Like that. I'm going to now select both the borders. Just bring that up a little bit. This one, I'm going to hold the command key down. Just shift it just a little bit. Just a little bit. You know what? From a design point of view, I realize that that probably needs to be on the same, yeah, same level. Great. I kind of like where that's going. So let's select that. Let's put it in the corner. Let's uh, make it a little bit smaller. And normally what I will do, and I'll just do it really quickly, is I'm going to go into my cuts and I'm going to change certain things. So if I look at this in a preview, you can see it's all filling. It's all solid black. I don't want to do that. I'm going to use some different material. Maybe I'll have, use some plastic that is color on top and a different color underneath. So I can just kind of do a line and reveal that color. So I'm going to actually do that on the twos. And then I'm going to do a fill on the outer. And I'm also going to fill the badge. Let's see what's going on here. Again, bang, too much. Too, <laughs> I put the wrong one in. I'm going to make that a line because that's a cut line in as well. That's what I did wrong. See, everyone it happens to the best of us. And I've still got that as a fill offset. Let's go as a fill. Nope, still not gonna do it. Why is it not doing that? We're filling the badge. We need to make that a line, that's why. Thinking the wrong thing, perfect. And I'm also gonna fill these guys. So his name, and I'm going to fill the ship name or where he was assigned. So it gives it a little bit of a, a difference. So we're going to color that in. It's kind of engraved, but it'll have color. That'll actually come out with a lower design color. And I'll actually do that. Actually, I'm going to do that with all of them, except for the affiliation, which is Starfleet. All right. So I've got that. It's designed. I'm looking happy with it. Let's go and make a sheet of badges. I'm just going to make that a little smaller. So now we're going to go to our grid array tool. My Accents getting the better of me. And in this case, we can make this a little bit closer. So let's try 40, not 84. Let's try 30. Actually, that's way too side. Too far. We're going to now make it. We're gonna get as many of these in as we possibly can. Let's go back to let's go zoom out a little bit just so I can see, we'll move this to the side. Can we get six? Beautiful, we can get six in. And in this case, we're gonna go to... Nope, let's not do that. We need some spacing, we need... Shift spacing, so we're gonna do that. We'll bring it right close, because we wanna get as many of these on this sheet as possible. We can actually get another one in across, can't we? Yes, we can. We're just gonna keep going down. I don't actually have data for all of these, <laughs> but we've got all our sheets here. We've now selected off. Let's go back to our variable array tool and hit a test. And you can see that it's propagated the first bunch of them, but I don't have information continuing. So in this case, this is again, a really good example that you could make as many as you can fit in. Let's make these a little bit bigger because we've only got, I think it's 15 pieces of information. But I'm gonna quickly save this because it's a great tool. And I know people keep asking me things like, hey, can we get the files? Well, we're working on that. Very soon you will be uh, creating a space for everyone to be able to get files. So you can load these files up into your own copy of Lightburn and you'll be able to run these projects and play with them and see what's going on. Let me know in the comments below if you if that's something that you're keen on being able to do. So in this case, actually, we're gonna use the array tool again. Let's just get rid of everything. I did this the long way, but that's okay. Let's scale this up a little bit. And we'll go to the array tool. We'll go across, across, 
that's okay. And again, you can see how if you had to scale this up as a job very fast, incredibly quick to be able to do it. One of the things that I love learning in Lightburn is being able to get this stuff done very quickly. We're testing it. You might want to create things that sit on the desk that identify the speaker. Here we go. We've got all the information we want. Excellent. Not a problem. We start at zero. We go all the way through. You could design a little stand for this as well. All we need to do then is just go and run the job, but we're not going to run the job right now. We're going to simulate it. So there's our preview. We've got 12 of them there. So just to simulate what will happen once you've run the job, you've changed the material, you're going to continue to run the job again. We're going to go to 12 and say the current one is 12. We're going to hit a test and you can see here the very first tag that comes up is Law, then the Traveler, Mr. Home, Dr. Polanski, Guinan, Sonia Gomez, Reginald Barkley, Keiko until we've run out. So again, in, in a case like this, you could remove the last four. You could maybe use it on a piece of scrap. That's a really fast way to take data from a spreadsheet and be able to incorporate it into Lightburn to make a variety of projects. I'm super keen to see how you're going to use this feature in Lightburn on your projects. Okay. Now you can set up your projects with unique numbers generated within Lightburn. Any way you look at it, it's a faster way to complete your job. If you like this tutorial, feel free to check out some of these laser tutorials right here and I'll see you for the next video. Now go make something amazing.